See you over at the big new. Right away. What for? Well, an old friend of his from Stockton just got into town. Heath Barkley. Heath Barkley? Yeah. Well, Pa didn't say anything about him coming to Jubilee. Well, I guess it's a surprise to him, too. Better get right on over there. That's gospel. Ain't that the truth, Heath? That's right, only then it wasn't so funny. Oh, no, it wasn't funny then. No, no. Now, when them desert rats were shooting at us from them rocks, he... Hey, Chad. Here he is now. Chad, come over here. Well, there he is. Heath Barkley. Told you he'd be riding into Jubilee one of these days. Heath is my boy, Chad. Glad to meet you, Chad. Mr. Barkley? <laughs> Mr. Barkley? This is Heath Barkley. He's like one of the family. We don't go Mr. and him, do we, Heath? That's right. <laughs> yes, sir, I was just thinking the other day, well, you wasn't much older than Chad here when you signed up as my deputy at Spanish camp. Oh, I was telling Cy and Billy here about the time Heath and me went after the Simpson gang. <laughs> oh, Chad here, he sure gets a kick out of that story. <laughs> Sit down, Chad. Hey, Fred, another round. Oh, yes, sir. It's a big day for me. You two fellas finally meeting up after all these years. Sit down, Chad, will you? I, I can't, Pa. I gotta get a letter on the afternoon stage. Well, that can wait. No, it can't. Well, then you go mail your letter and just hightail it on back here. Uh, you gonna be in Jubilee long? Couple of days. Pa, I like that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're going? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What about my chicken? <laughs> what about it? Get it down. I said, get it down. Now look, that bird's my supper. Stella's gonna fix me up a mess of fried chicken so you can just climb right up there and get it down. You're drunk. Oh, 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 maybe so. Maybe so. And I ain't had me so much to drink that I can't handle a big man like you. So if you ain't just wearing that gun belt to hold up your pants, you and me's gonna step outside. Excuse me. this cowboy. She hadn't taken a hand in this heat. Chad's been out here a year now. It's time he learned to take care of himself. Well, I best get him into a cell and him sleep it off. I got a feeling I've seen this Jasper before. Any of you boys know him? Hmm, sure does look familiar. Give me a hand.
George? What do you need? Get settled at the hotel? Clerk asked me to bring you this. Belongs to your guest. Oh, he's still sleeping like a baby. It's coffee in the bag if you want some. Thanks. Be right with you. Father mentioned some coffee. Help yourself. It's Frank's coffee, all right. Frank, ever tell you about the time his horse pulled up lame and he used some of it on his leg? Did the trick, too. Yeah, he told me. He's told me just about everything that ever happened to you two. Knowing Frank, probably more than once. You know, it's hard to believe. What's that? But you're the same boy that Frank used to talk about. How old were you when your mother took you back to Boston? Five, six years old? Six. I know he's a mighty happy man to have you back. It's all he's talked about for as long as I've known him. I can remember when I first worked for him, how he used to talk about maybe going back to Boston and trying to persuade your mother into coming back. Well, he never quite made it. <clears throat> Probably because he knew it wouldn't have done any good. Oh, he was right. Wild horses couldn't have dragged Mother back. She hated this country. Everything about it, right up until she died. She just didn't belong here. A lot of people don't. She said I didn't either. After what happened in the saloon, I wouldn't be surprised if you agreed. That didn't mean anything. That's right. I didn't back off from that drunk because I was scared. I just don't happen to believe in getting into a gunfight because of a stupid thing like a chicken. Nobody's going to blame you for that. Oh, aren't they? Heat! Come here. Read this. The drunk? Earl Vaughn. I knew I'd seen him somewhere before. Who's Earl Vaughn? The Vaughn gang, Floyd and his brother Earl. Floyd Boss is the outfit. Thought they were operating over in Nevada. Well, they're in California now. Eastways Earl is. And if he's here, Floyd and the rest of the gang can't be far away. You better get ready for a lot of trouble, Frank. Like Gold Ridge? Maybe. What's Gold Ridge? It's a little town in Mono County. One of the Vaughn gang got arrested. Floyd and his brother Earl busted him out. They killed four men. Before they rode out, they set fire to the town and burned it down, or most of it anyway. And five more people died. Yes, Mr. Watson? Old Floyd's gonna be expecting me to meet him and the boys up in them hills tomorrow. And if I don't, You, uh, you remember Gold Ridge, Marshal? I remember. Good. <laughs> Good. Huh. Seem bad job. Keep feeding me like this, you can make me sorry to leave this here deal of yours. That'll be in the morning. In the morning? I'm taking you to the county jail in Stockton. That's so. Just can't trust this here cracker box of yours, huh? <laughs> huh. Well, I can't say as I blame you, Marshal. Seems to me this here place wouldn't hardly make a first-class bonfire. Marshal, you a smart man. You know old Floyd ain't gonna let you take me to Stockton. He rides in here tomorrow looking for me, and he don't find me. He's coming after you, him and the boys, six of them. And what's going to happen is you're going to wind up unnecessarily dead. You know what I'd do if I was you, Marshal? You'd let Earl Vaughn go. <laughs> hey, how'd you guess, Marshal? Finish your supper. <laughs> Yeah. 
Sure, all of that? How many men are going with you? I gotta leave my deputy in charge of things here. I guess it's just me and Chad. Chad? Well, he's gotta get his feet wet sometime. May as well be now. Maybe so. But... Oh, I wouldn't worry about Chad. He's young and he's green, but he'll learn. Sometimes he seems like he's all left feet and thumbs, but he'll learn. I learned you a trick or two, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> That's what I told Chad. I learned heat and I can learn him. Chad's a sawyer. I know the stuff he's got in him. He'll learn. Well, I gotta get to the telegraph office before it closes. I have to notify Sheriff Lathrop I'm bringing Earl in. As long as I'm heading back to Stockton, you don't mind if I ride along with you, do you? Why, that you had business in Sonora. Well, I changed my mind. Gotta get back home. I guess I should give you an argument, but I ain't gonna. I'd feel a lot better if you came along. Thanks. I'll send that telegram. It's gonna be like old times, you and me riding together again. That's right. Hmm. Sonny's all yours. Better watch it, Sonny. The horse of mine's used to taking orders from a man. Hold on, Get up there. Get out, boy. Hey, just have a little fun, Marshal. You should, too. Why, you still got to die. Yeah! Hey, you there. You tell old Floyd he comes out for me to bring a bottle, you hear me? Oh, another thing. You folks give these here nice people a beer, and you hear me? And I'll be back to check. You can just bet your sweet life I'll be back. Say, if Gordon wants to buy that herd for $10 a head, we sell them to him. I suppose you tell me why when you can get $15 a head in Virginia City? But the cattle are here, not in Virginia City. And do you know how much it would cost to ship them? Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Nick, who said anything about shipping them over? We'll drive them over. And do you know how much that will cost this time of year with no water and no grass? Approximately $5 a mile, maybe six. Well, if you don't believe me, you figure it out. I will do just exactly that. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Mrs. Come Barclay. in, come in. Thank you. Hello, Jared. Nick. Good morning. Sheriff. Comes to approximately $1,500. There goes the profit. Not necessarily. What do you Nick mean, Jared? Nick, Jared. Oh, sorry, Sheriff. Well, if I'm interrupting something... You are, and I couldn't be more grateful. They've been arguing for over an hour about what to do with a few head of cattle. May I get you some coffee? Oh, no thanks, Miss Barkley. The reason I stopped is that uh, I had a telegram waiting for me in the office this morning. It's from the town marshal up in Jubilee. Fred Sawyer? Yes. There's something wrong. Well, no, not exactly. What's that mean? Well, Sawyer arrested Earl Vaughn in Jubilee yesterday. <whistles> That's quite a catch. He's bringing him into Stockton, and Heath is with him. Heath? Well, he was supposed to go on to Sonora. Well, all I know is what Sawyer's telegram said. Anyways, I'm riding out to meet him, just in case there's any trouble. And I figured maybe you'd like to come along. Sheriff, you figured just exactly right. You give us five minutes. Come on, Chad. Let's get moving. Your pa's right, sonny. You ain't got no time to lollygag. Unless I miss my guess, old Floyd started looking for me already. Manuel, stay with the horses. Johnny, you come with me, Rake. Take the others, look things over. The hotel, the saloon. Come on. Look around. We don't want 
want any trouble here, Vaughn. I get the feeling you've been expecting me. Why don't you and your men just mount up and ride off? We got nothing here you want. Where saw you? Well, he's still a marshal here, isn't he? He's away. Away where? To, uh, <clears throat> to Sonora. Well, what's your name? George Rhodes. Uh, well, I'll tell you why I'm here, Mr. Rhodes. You see, my brother Earl, he came in here yesterday to pick up some supplies for us, and, uh, well, he didn't come back when he should have. You know anything about it? No. What did Sawyer go to Sonora for? Oh, just business. Just business? Floyd, the marshal got him. I got it out of the bartender. Sawyer, Sawyer's son, and a guy named Barkley taken Earl into Stockton. Left out first thing this morning. lied to me, Mr. Rowe. Say we take a break. What's the matter, Heath? You getting soft? Maybe. Chad, how you doing? All right. Heath wants to take a rest. How about you? Let's keep going. Want me to take it for a while? I'm all right. The kid's a demon for punishment, ain't he? <laughs> Pushing him pretty hard, Frank. He was his mama's boy in Boston for all those years. He's got a lot of catching up to do.
happened? He, he jumped me. Well, how come he jumped you? What was you doing when you're supposed to be watching him? Can't you do nothing right just once, just one time? I'm sorry. Well, you're lucky he ain't dead. It's lucky we all ain't dead. I guess if it wasn't for Heath, we would be. Thanks. Chad. It's all right, boy. It's just the way you gotta learn. Look, it's gonna be light soon. You go ahead and saddle the horses. Come on, boy. It's all right. Come on. I'll stir up the fire for some coffee. So that's it. That's what he was doing when he's supposed to be watching Earl. That's the stuff his mom made him learn. Something wrong with that, Frank? What do you mean? You just saw what was wrong with it. Well, I'm not so sure about it, Frank. You think it's all right for a grown boy to be messing with stuff like this? Frank. Well, I don't. Chad knows it. I've told him I never want to see him drawing any more pictures as long as I live. And so help me, he ain't gonna. I'll get some more wood for the fire. <laughs> As soon as I get this fire out. Pretty mean sky coming up over those mountains. Yeah, it looks like a storm brewing. We're going to be riding right into it. Huh? No way to get around it. Come on, let's go. See that? Doesn't look good. Could be snow at another thousand feet. I don't think we should try to make it through Wolf's Pass. Maybe not. Trail down through Limbo, about a mile ahead. We could take it, circle around through Harper's Cut. Stay low enough to miss any snow. It's a long way around. Might be a good idea. Floyd Bond's following us. He'll figure we use Wolf's Pass. You can take the high road, the low road, any road you want to, Marcia. You ain't gonna lose old Floyd. We'll go through Limbo. There can't be more than a couple of hours ahead. Aren't you, cowboy? 
What'd you do? Let him bait you? Chad! Marshal, I'm giving you fair warning. You let that thing you call a son swing at me once more, just once more, and there won't be enough left to him to stick in the ground. Frank. Yeah, hit on him! 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 There's an old rule. Don't draw it unless you're ready to use it. I've got something else that belongs to you. I don't know much about things like that, but that looks pretty good to me. All right. I shouldn't be wasting my time with stuff like that. I'll bet you never did, did you? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Chad, get it off your chest. What? Whatever it is about me that's bothering you. Well, you don't bother me. Why should you? Let me see if I can guess. Ever since you've landed in Jubilee, all you've heard Frank talk about is Heath. Heath can do this, Heath can do that, Heath can do anything. And if it's something he can't do, then it must be something not worth doing. Right? From the minute I first saw Pa again, he made it very clear what he wanted for a son. And it wasn't a Chad Sawyer. He wanted another Heath Barkley. And apparently, you've decided if that's what he wants, then that's what you'll try and give him. Oh, yeah, go ahead and laugh. I'm not laughing. Yes, you are. And after what's happened, why not? I must look pretty silly to you. But someday, someday, I'm gonna make my pa forget he ever knew anybody named Heath Barkley. <laughs> Where do you figure they went? The short way, Wolf Pass. <laughs> Floyd? Take cover, lay pass. Right.
Huh? The one on the buckskin. He's the sheriff in Stockton. Must have come to meet Sawyer. Only he didn't meet him yet. Now that means Sawyer went by way of Limbo instead of Wolf Pass. and put them in that old livery stable across the street. Give you a hand? I can manage. Sorry, I uh, shouldn't have tried to handle it alone. That's all right. Don't worry about it. How can I not worry about it? I bungle everything I do. I <laughs> can't seem to do anything right. Well, now that sketch I saw, that looked right. Well, now don't bring that up again. Why not? You know how Paul feels about it. Well, that's no answer. It doesn't mean anything. Back in Boston, yes, I wanted to be an artist to paint. At least I thought I did. But that's a whole different world. Maybe that's where you belong. Nobody asked you, Heath. Get out of here, Chad. Pa, I... Get out. Well, we was friends, Heath. Well, we still are, aren't we? Not when you go talking to Chad like that. Not when you go putting ideas in his head. I'm not putting head. ideas in his head. Well, don't tell me. I just heard what you said. Frank Chad already knows he doesn't belong out here. He does. And sooner or later, he's going to have to admit it. He's by flesh and blood. If he don't belong here, he don't belong nowhere. And you're going to have to admit it too, Frank. I, I thought you was my friend. Why are you talking like this? Because it's true. It is a lie. It is a lie, just like all the lies his ma told him. This country wasn't good enough for her. It wasn't nice and soft and easy and civilized enough. She hated it and she made Chad hate it. But she's dead. And he's here. And he's my boy. And I'm going to learn him how to be a man. Frank, Chad already is a man. Or he could be. Not your kind, not mine, maybe. But in his own way, just as much a man as either of us. Doing what? Drawing pictures. Being a namby-pamby, sissified picture painter. He's a Sawyer. And he's going to be a real man. No, Frank. He's going to kill himself trying. Pa! Look! White blind. <laughs> I told you! I, I told you! That blind's like a bloodhound! You ain't going to get 
of him to slip. One more cackle out of you, and I'm going to blow your head into the next room. Smoke coming from over there. Yeah. Sawyer's there. All right, you two, go to the side. You other two, cover the back. Rake, come with me. yesterday morning after all. It could be they decided not to go through Wolf Pass and risk getting caught in a storm. Well, there's one way to find out. Sheriff, why don't you go on down through Jubilee and Jared and I will take the trail back through Limbo and Harper's Cut. All right, I'll meet you at Forbes Station. All right. There? I got a glimpse of three of them. Look, Frank, I've been thinking. If I can slip out, get around behind the livery stable, we can get Floyd caught in a crossfire. Then we have a chance of getting our horses and getting out of town. I guess we still think alike on a lot of things. Now, I was just upstairs. There's a trap door up there. I can get through that, down the next building or two, and circle around behind the stable, just like you say. You, Frank? Yeah, me. Where Earl's my prisoner, I'm still wearing this. It's my show. I'm the one that's gonna go. Good luck. Thank you. Sure don't like all this waiting. Yeah, I don't like it, Rake. All you have to do is do it. Boys. <laughs> Down. We got a new 
something. Don't move, Sawyer. Not one little bit. You in the hotel. Listen to me. We got Sawyer. If he moves a finger, he's a dead man. Now, do you want us to kill him? Or do you want to talk sense? What do you want? You know what I want. Send Earl out. Send him out. I'll let Sawyer off the hook. If you don't, he's dead. Don't do it, Heath. I'm giving you five minutes to make up your mind. Don't do it, I'm telling you. Don't do it. Five minutes. I think I can pick them off from one of the rooms upstairs. No, no, there's two of them up there. If you don't get both of them, Paul will be killed. Then I better get them both, isn't it? It's too risky. He's not with it. Let's let him go. You heard Frank. He doesn't want that. I don't care what he wants. If Frank says fight, we fight. That's what he wants. That's the way it is in his kind of world. You didn't have to let him try to turn you into Heath Barkley or anybody else. You could have left. You had your own choice. You could have made your own world. But what you didn't have was the guts to make it. Now, if you don't want Frank to tell you how to live, then don't you try to tell him. Chad, listen to me. Putting me in jail ain't worth your paw getting killed. You know that. Let Barkley be a hero. He ain't got nothing to lose. Turn me loose. That way nobody gets hurt. And then you'll be the man your pa's always wanted you to be. Give me the keys, Chad. Think of your pa.
Oh, Jed. I'm all right, Pop. Oh, sure you are. Did you get him? With your help. Where the devil did you come from? Just be glad, brother. Don't know what brought you here, but I want to thank you, boys. Mighty glad to have been of service, Marshal. Let's get the horses. All right. You did a pretty fair job yourself. When you get back on your feet, I got me a new deputy. I'd like to talk to you about that, Pa. Frank, I think this is one time you just better listen. All right. I'll listen. see you over at the Big New, right away. What for? An old friend of his from Stockton just got into town, Heath Barkley. Heath Barkley? Yeah. Well, Pa didn't say anything about him coming to Jubilee. Well, I guess it's a surprise to him, too. Better get right on over there. That the truth, Heath. That's right, only then it wasn't so funny. Oh, no, it wasn't funny then. No, no. Now when them desert rats were shooting at us from them rocks, he... Hey, Chad. Here he is now. Chad, come over here. Well, there he is. Heath Barkley. Told you he'd be riding into Jubilee one of these days. Heath is my boy, Chad. Glad to meet you, Chad. Mr. Barkley. <laughs> Mr. Barkley? This is Heath Barkley. He's like one of the family. We don't go Mr. and him, do we, Heath? That's right. <laughs> Yes, sir, I was just thinking the other day. Well, you wasn't much older than Chad here when you signed up as my deputy at Spanish camp. Oh, I was telling Cy and Billy here about the time Heath and me went after the Simpson gang. <laughs> oh, Chad here, he sure gets a kick out of that story. <laughs> Sit down, Chad. Hey, Fred, another round. Oh, yes, sir. It's a big day for me. You two fellas finally meeting up after all these years. Sit down, Chad, will you? I, I can't, Pa. I gotta get a letter on the afternoon stage. Well, that can wait. No, it can't. Well, then you go mail your letter and just hightail it on back here. Uh, you gonna be in Jubilee long? A couple of days. Pa, I like that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're going? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What about my chicken? <laughs> what about it? Get it down. I said, get it down. Now look, 
that bird's my supper. Stella's gonna fix me up a mess of fried chicken so you can just climb right up there and get it down. You're drunk. Oh, oh, oh maybe so. Maybe so. But I ain't had me so much drink that I can't handle a big man like you. So if you ain't just wearing that gun belt to hold up your pants, you and me's gonna step outside. Excuse me. Stay out of this, cowboy. She hadn't taken a hand in this heat. Chad's been out here a year now. It's time he learned to take care of himself. Well, I best get him into a cell and him sleep it off. I got a feeling I've seen this Jasper before. Any of you boys know him? Hmm, sure does look familiar. Give me a hand. See you over at the big new. Right away. What for? An old friend of his from Stockton just got into town. Heath Barkley. Heath Barkley? Yeah. Well, Pa didn't say anything about him coming to Jubilee. Well, I guess it's a surprise to him, too. Better get right on over there. That's the truth, Heath. That's right, only then it wasn't so funny. Oh, no, it wasn't funny then. No, no. Now, when them desert rats were shooting at us from them rocks, he... Hey, Chad. Here he is now. Chad, come over here. Well, there he is. Heath Barkley. Told you he'd be riding into Jubilee one of these days. Heath is my boy, Chad. Glad to meet you, Chad. Mr. Barkley. <laughs> Mr. Barkley? This is Heath Barkley. He's like one of the family. We don't go Mr. and him, do we, Heath? That's right. <laughs> Yes, sir, I was just thinking the other day. Well, you wasn't much older than Chad here when you signed up as my deputy at Spanish camp. Oh, I was telling Cy and Billy here about the time Heath and me went after the Simpson gang. <laughs> oh, Chad here, he sure gets a kick out of that story. <laughs> Sit down, Chad. Hey, Fred, another round. Oh, yes, sir. It's a big day for me. You two fellas finally meeting up after all these years. Sit down, Chad, will you? I, I can't, Pa. I gotta get a letter on the afternoon stage. Well, that can wait. No, it can't. Well, then you go mail your letter and just hightail it on back here. Uh, you gonna be in Jubilee long? Couple of days. Pa, I like that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're going? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What about my chicken? <laughs> what about it? 
Get it down. I said, did it down. Now look, that bird's my supper. Stella's gonna fix me up a mess of fried chicken so you can just climb right up there and get it down. You're drunk. Oh, oh, oh maybe so. Maybe so. And I ain't had me so much drink that I can't handle a big man like you. So if you ain't just wearing that gun belt to hold up your pants, you and me's gonna step outside. Excuse me. Stay out of this, cowboy. She hadn't taken a hand in this heat. Chad's been out here a year now. It's time he learned to take care of himself. Well, I best get him into a cell and let him sleep it off. I got a feeling I've seen this Jasper before. Any of you boys know him? Hmm, sure does look familiar. Give me a hand.